All right, welcome back everyone. This is Ebony again, AKA Fit Mom Diva of Simplicity Health Style. And today we have Miss Ayana with us. How are you, Ayana? Very well, how are you? I am amazing. Thank you for taking time out of your day to share with us. You guys, she's gonna deliver some jewels with us. And for those of you that choose to stick around to the end, you'll have an opportunity to earn a complimentary gift as a form of appreciation for listening to us today. So Ayana, can you just start us off so we get to know you a little bit better and share one motivational quote that really inspires you, something that encourages you and gets you going? Yeah, so one of my favorite quotes is um, by Shirley Chisholm, and it says, if there's not a seat for you at the table, then bring a folding chair. And I've really been living by that quote for the past almost two years. Um, it encourages me because it, uh, the idea that even if you're not invited to certain tables, you can still be a part of the conversation and that like you have a right to be there. Um, I know for me as a woman of color, that is something that I battle with constantly, especially being within academia, is the idea that certain spaces or, and or tables are off limits to me because of my race and or my background. Um, so I really use that quote to as like a self-confidence booster when I'm going into different situations. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. I also say to people that like, cause I, uh, I will tell people sometimes that only allow people at your table that actually deserve to be there. So I think if you are providing value, then yes, you definitely deserve to be at that table. Sometimes people confuse that with allowing just any and everybody at the table and you know how you have those people that are just like they just suck your energy and they mm -hmm. actually promote more harm than good those people should not be utilizing that quote no we don't need you at the table <laughs> we need you to say way over there <laughs> but yes i uh i've seen oftentimes in uh corporate america sometimes where especially people of color they feel like, you know, you're not welcome to this particular area over here. You stay over there and we just tell you what to do, <laughs> you know? So I think that uh, show them that you can provide value through that conversation and that you can, you can change their mindset in a, in a positive direction. And then they'll welcome you to the table. Now, if you're just gonna sit there and suck and take, then they're not gonna be as welcoming. But if you can provide people with value, do it whenever you can. Can you talk a little bit about a time where maybe you didn't feel like you were at your best? Maybe you weren't confident. Maybe you didn't know how to provide value to the people around you. You felt stuck. You had overwhelming circumstances arise that maybe you didn't even know that they were even ever going to occur. And you were steadily pedaling toward this vision or this goal or this dream. And despite those circumstances, you were able to, at the end of the day, bring that goal or that dream to fruition. Yeah, so um, one of my roles currently is to be the president of the Programming and Activities Board um, at Arizona State University for the West Campus. And so this year has been a major year of growth for me personally in my professional skills and my leadership skills, just because of all of the things that you don't anticipate to go wrong. And it's like everything goes wrong and you just have to learn how to roll with it and figure out like your next steps. So um, uh, last semester there was um, figuring out how to encourage my staff to be involved in the events that other departments were planning and not just their own was a struggle, especially around our signature event for homecoming. And so one of the things um, that was happening was we would say, these are mandatory events, you need to show up, but then only half of the staff would show up. And so then going back with my other executives and sitting down and going, okay, are we communicating clearly? What does that communication actually look like? Have we given them enough time to respond to our requests? Um, do they have other situations? Do they feel like they can come and talk to us? We're all questions that we had to examine and then address in the moment. So for some of our staff, they were just ignoring us. And unfortunately, there wasn't anything to do about it in the moment, you know, and then moving forward, we would pull them aside and 
and ask them what was happening. And then other staff, it was, we weren't communicating as clearly as we thought we were. So we had to sit down, rethink about how we were communicating our message and then how they would receive it and then move forward from that. So it's a, it's a learning process, especially when um, on top of figuring out everybody's different personalities, because we have a staff of 34 people. Um, you also need to figure out the university policies and like what you can and cannot do. And of course, being um, in the position for only a year, uh, which is common for most of the student leadership positions, it can be a steep learning curve and hard to know, especially because university policy is always changing all the time. So that's some of the struggles um, that I have faced and I'm still going through, but I find it really helpful to go to my advisors um, as well as my friends when I'm, when I personally like need to vent and then also go back and say, okay, well, what's my part in this? What do I need to own? How can I um, communicate better, clearly, concisely, and then I follow up with the people that I need to. Yeah, and I think that that can carry over into personal life as well. You know, sometimes we might think that we're communicating the best way possible in that relationship, and actually we're doing it all wrong, <laughs> you know? And it can come from both angles. You know, one person thinks that they're communicating well with you, and you think that you're communicating well with them, and before you know it, you just destroyed a relationship off of just simple miscommunication. I've had that happen in my life before where, you know, people thought I meant one thing and I actually meant total opposite. <laughs> I'm like, well, if you had just asked me <laughs> what I meant by that, then you wouldn't have been upset with me for the last three days, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I think that we can all learn from that. But I uh, often find sometimes that we're able to move through situations and, you know, kind of feel better about situations when we have people in our corner. So can you talk a little bit about how people can gain support when they're feeling like maybe they're unheard, they don't know what the next steps are for them, they have a particular goal in mind, and they're feeling like, oh my gosh, how do I get from point A to point B when these people around me don't really understand what I'm going through, they don't understand really how to help me, <laughs> you know, what are some ways that people can gain some support to their, you know, personal network of people, their professional network of people that will allow them to meet their goals that much quicker? Okay, so I would say for their personal um, network, it's always important to examine who you surround yourself with, because ultimately we're the summation of who we hang around the most. And so sometimes it can be hard to um, really examine who you are in relation to who you're hanging around. But it's very important because you need people that will be there to support you um, when you're having those rough days and you just need someone to like listen to you you need to make sure that you're, you're surrounding yourself around the people who can give you sound advice, um, as well as the people who will actually like listen to you and help you like work through it and digest what's happening, right? So personally, it's very important to look at um, your, the friends you have, as you said, the people that you have at your table, right? So um, that would be the personal one. Like I know for me, I have two friends in particular that when I run into um, race related issues at school, I know that I can trust them to have a conversation with them and they'll understand where I'm coming from and hear me out and then be able to talk with me about like either solutions or sympathize about like why that situation sucks, right? right. And then right. on the professional end, um, and also kind of the personal end. I think it's important to have those people that you would consider a mentor and that you feel comfortable going to who either had previous experience or um, you know, just from like doing the job or are older than you and you know, they to you they have the wisdom that you need. And with uh, your mentors, it doesn't have to be all the time right? Or it doesn't have to be, um, 
you know, consistent. If sometimes mentors are best utilized when you're in a moment of uncertainty, right? Yeah. And you can just do a quick, hey, I don't know what's happening. I don't know how to move forward. This is what, from my point of view, has happened. How would you suggest moving forward, right? And so sometimes that little moment of encouragement can be very helpful. And then also, I mean, long-term mentors and mentors that you interact with consistently can also be helpful to help you navigate the day-to-day -day things, um, which is why I'm really thankful that the school provides the Furring Activities Board a um, advisor who's on their professional staff. Um, very helpful in navigating university policy, day-to-day -day mm -hmm. politics. Yeah, and you know, support can be in our life in various ways too. You know, sometimes it could be a word that someone speaks on the street to us that, you know, maybe that just brightened our moment. <laughs> or it could be us extending ourselves to someone else in our work environment or in our friend circle. And, you know, there's so many different ways that you can seek support if you're just open to noticing it. You know, I think that if you're close to support, then you're not necessarily going to you're going you're not necessarily going to appreciate it as much. You know, it's like you hear you know how sometimes you you hear something and it goes in one ear and out the other. <laughs> you know that person actually is supporting you, but you're not open to receiving the message. <laughs> so I think that sometimes just be open to hearing what other people have to say and, and realizing that support can come in different ways as well. I'd agree with that. And also add that uh, for support, sometimes it's important to be vulnerable yeah. with the people that you're going to for support, right? Because they, um, when you're vulnerable, I think there's more clarity in the situation and like you're able to move you're able to progress faster than if you're, if you're, I almost want to say like putting on a face that everything is fine and like giving little details. Yes, I have some friends that they probably are like, man, I wish Ebony wasn't so vulnerable <laughs> because I will sit and I'll just toss their head off for like an hour <laughs> and they just sit and listen like, oh, wow. And it's, uh, it's so liberating though. You know, I feel like, you know, after I get everything out, I feel great. Like they don't, they don't even really have to say much. <laughs> they just were there to listen to me just rant, <laughs> you know? So I think, <laughs> you know, knowing, knowing who those, who the quality people are. Cause I think that sometimes you can be vulnerable to the wrong people. When you're exactly. vulnerable to the wrong people, then it produces more drama. I've seen that. I've seen that in some people's lives where they thought that they could trust this person over here. And all that person did was use that vulnerable situation to their advantage. <laughs> so having a sense of discernment of character, and like you mentioned, personality types, have a, having a sense of discernment of character and, and different personality types and people that you, that you can really trust. Because not everybody's trustworthy. Just because you're a trustworthy person doesn't mean that everybody around you is trustworthy. I mean, let's just use, you know, let's not be naive. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so just uh being able to have that wisdom of knowing who you can go to and just air it all out. A lot of times it, it allows them to really give advice that is really helpful to you because they understand the entire picture as opposed to just a small piece that you're giving them just because you want it to appear that things are okay when they're really not okay. I get most of my best advice from people that I can talk to for an hour and just like, you know, yap, 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 because they understand the big picture, <laughs> the whole picture, <laughs> you know. Tell us a little bit about how you give yourself self-care, because sometimes, you know, sometimes it's not that we don't have a support system. It's not that we don't know what our vision is or our goals are. Sometimes we just feel like, man, I'm just so overwhelmed, you know. I sit in traffic two hours a day and I'm busy at work and I have school work to do. And, you know, there's just so much that is required of us. And we don't feel like we have a whole lot of time to give back to ourselves and feed our spirit. But in all actuality, feeding our spirit and giving back to ourselves is what gives us the energy and the vitality to carry out our dreams and live our core life purpose in a, in a way that's meaningful to us. A lot of times people don't see that relationship right away. 
Can you talk a little bit about how you give yourself self-care and maybe some benefits to that and how it's helped you in accomplishing some of your endeavors? Yeah, so for so me, um, the main way I give myself self-care is I purposefully engage in activities that I like doing. I make time for social time and time for friends and time for family. Um, a lot of times my weekends are my clean the house day and talk to family day, right? Because, you know, busy week, things will get out of order, but I feel like I work best when I have things in order. Um, and then I also work best when I get to have conversations about like what's happening with my life and the people I care about their lives um, and feel connected to other people. So those are my main ways. I always tell people who are in school, like even though your homework must get done and even though you know you have assignments for class, if you take a break when your brain has checked out, you'll be more productive when you come back. Like yeah. go to an event, just take a break, go to an event, then do your homework. So I utilize that a lot. Um, I also, uh, in my role as president, um, I usually have to be in the office a lot for obvious reasons for people who need me and going to meetings and whatnot. But I've started to um, have specific days of the week where I do my office hours um, offsite in a location where it's more quiet, where I can get work done. And I'll tell myself, if you need me, you can contact me, but I won't be in the office today. Yeah. And, you know, I think you said something that was really key. That is to take a step away from whatever our responsibilities are, whatever that may be. Even if you are someone that just cleans houses. <laughs> you know that can be very exhausting it's physically exhausting it can be mentally exhausting because you're putting forth a lot of energy and effort no matter what it is but taking a step away just taking a walk listening to some music whatever it is when you come back to that activity you feel revitalized you know I think that a lot of times we get so used to knowing what to knowing what we're supposed to do and we can do it well that we just do it on autopilot and we don't really recognize sometimes when we might be stressed out when our body's stressed out because it begins to feel normal to feel that way <laughs> you know but when you take a step back from it and you begin to treat yourself better then you begin to realize ah oh, this is the feeling that i've been missing <laughs> and i didn't realize it you know but when you have something to compare it to then it allows you to know what it takes to get back to that state. And I think that that's sometimes what's missing. Like you don't understand what you're missing out on by not giving yourself the proper self-care, whatever that may be. And it's different for everybody. Some people, you know, they believe that it's looking at all four walls. <laughs> Some people believe that they have to go to the gym for two hours or they need to go and garden or they need to paint a picture. You know, there's so many different ways of providing yourself with that sense of meaning and, and self-care. But the more frequently that you do it, the, the more meaning you give life. And a lot of times you give yourself more energy to carry out some of these, some of these visions that you've had since you were eight years old, but you're always just so tired. You can't, you can't implement it because you're always so tired. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I, uh, I, I have these conversations all the time with my friends because a lot of us are pre-med students. And so very, um, very driven group of people to be around but a lot of times they don't sleep and I'm like not sleeping is not going to get you anywhere like you have to make time to sleep and you have to make time to eat you'll feel a lot better if you do these two things on a consistent basis yeah. yes I uh just recently spent some extra time off of social media doing a little uh, experiment with my son and because I took some time away, I was actually able to get more sleep because I wasn't having that distraction of, you know, oh, I have some free time. Let me go on social media. And I just felt so much better <laughs> because I got in that extra sleep that I wouldn't have ordinarily gotten. So sometimes, you know, we, we don't understand that we can reconfigure our day to actually make ourselves feel more vibrant and feel healthier if we just took a look at how we're actually spending our time, you know? So 
it didn't take much, but just a few hours or a couple hours of extra sleep and my whole day actually, I produced better when I came back to what I was doing because I felt more rested, <laughs> you know? So thank you so much for, for mentioning everything that you mentioned today. It all, it all <coughs> intertwines with each other. And I think that for a lot of people, it's not so much that we can't do. I think that we are missing the how-to steps and how to connect everything together to get to our, our end result. And a part of that is seeking out support from people seeking out ways to provide ourselves with additional self-care, uh, seeking out ways to be more vulnerable with the people that can help us the best, seeking out ways to look for th those motivational quotes or movies or TV shows or blogs or magazines or whatever <laughs> that you know, can help reshift our mindset about what's going on in our life. You know, so everything we talked about today, really, it all intertwines with one another. So can you just real quickly, there are people listening that they want to be able to move to the next step and they feel like, I hear everything that you're saying, Ayana and Ebony, but I just feel stuck. <laughs> I don't really know what the next step is and you just don't really understand what's going on in my life. What could you suggest or encourage those ladies? Um, I would suggest to find people who understand what's going on and then ask them for their advice on how to move forward. Um, it might also be helpful to take a minute and to just write down your visions and or expectations, and then to go seek those people out that understand you and can give you the proper advice on how to proceed forward. Awesome, awesome advice. And I think that, uh, Definitely reaching out to the right people that can offer you some mentorship or offer you advice that maybe have even experienced what you're going through because they've already been there. You know, sometimes you can, you can talk to people about certain topics and because they haven't actually experienced that, they can give you advice, but it's not really advice that's useful <laughs> because they really just don't understand what you're talking about. So being able to find those people that maybe have gone through a similar situation as you, a lot of times you'll get more, more clear advice. Not that, you know, you can't get advice from everybody, but you might get more clear advice on, on actual practical movement through it. So thank you. If any of you listening, you feel like you, you're stuck in your career or you're stuck in certain areas of your life and you need a little bit of movement, please connect with me or Ayana and we can help offer some support to you. We don't know everything, but we can also be there just as a listening ear. Sometimes that's important too. Um, for all of you that have listened this far, remember in the beginning of the interview, I talked about that you could earn a complimentary gift just by listening to us. I am a, a facilitator for a group called Nutrition for Busy Women. And you can find that link in the description box feel free to connect with me there because I provide people with resources on how to further themselves and identifying what their unique and natural gifts are so that they can infiltrate that into living a life full of meaning in terms of identifying and enhancing their core life purpose and also helping them to stay aligned in their careers. A lot of times people feel like they're good at what they do in their career, but it's not naturally aligned to who they really are. They're just good at what they do. So some of you that are struggling in that area of really finding something that you really find true fulfillment and meaning in, I can provide you with some free resources to be able to determine how to do that. And then also people that are feeling like, you know, I, I know what I'm expected to do in life, but I'm always tired. I'm always drained. I'm never eating right. I'm never exercising consistently. My stress is at a... 11 on a scale of 1 to 10. <laughs> I'll provide you with free resources to help you with in the areas of reconnecting with yourself again. And I believe that this is so vital because those two areas are definitely intertwined. Our, us living our core life purpose and living a whole and healthy life are more intertwined than what a lot of people assume. How can you really put your best effort forward if you don't know how to manage your time well and you don't know how to take care of yourself well you're only giving half 
half the work. <laughs> so if you need help in those areas and you need support, I invite you to join my Nutrition for Busy Women group and I'd love to be able to support you in your endeavors. So Ayana, thank you so much for taking time with us today. Is there a particular type of person that you would like to collaborate with? I know that there are ladies listening from different spots in this world that we're all experiencing very, you know, different paths, but we're very much more alike than we are different. So are there any particular ladies that you would love to be able to collaborate with? Um, at the moment, I am interested in collaborating with women who are in the medical field. Um, a lot of my research and background is on the effects of gender and gender roles in people's healthcare um, treatment, as well as like diagnosis and whatnot. So I'm always interested in connecting with people who are in the medical field or doing research around those areas. Um, and then also just if you want to connect and see like more, want to connect and hear more about like what I do, I'm always down for that as well. Awesome. I think that understanding gender roles in our medical and healthcare industry is so vital. It's so overlooked. <laughs> and no one should receive subpar care because they are a woman, <laughs> for example, but it does happen frequently. So that's an awesome, that's an awesome area to explore. I would love to learn a little bit more about that and maybe see some of your articles on that in the future. That'd be awesome. Awesome, Ayana. You are doing awesome stuff in this world. And I'm sure that a lot of people around you can appreciate it, even if you don't always feel appreciated. I, I, I can just see that you are about, you know, going places in this world. <laughs> so keep with it. Keep with what you're doing. Keep inspiring people, even if you don't feel like you are inspiring them. All of you listening, if you feel like you would like to share your experiences and you'd like to share your story, I would love to connect with you as well. If there's anything that we said today that resonated with you, feel free to also share this out to other people because you may feel like, oh, well, you know, I would love to share this with this person, but they may get offended when that might actually be the thing that they needed to hear today. So share this content out with any and everyone that you know that could benefit from some of the things that Ayana and I talked about. And I would love to invite you onto one of our future episodes as well, because we all need each other in this world and we all can support each other. We all have experiences that someone else may say, ah, that's just what I needed to hear in order to get from point A to point B. So all of my contact info is in the description box. All of Ayana's contact info is in the description box. And I look forward to connecting with you guys in our next episode. No matter where you are in the world, always remember to live a life full of meaning and purpose. Thank you, Ayana, and I'll talk to you guys in our next episode. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.